Hey guys, thanks for checking out the second bio lane video log. Um, got some really cool feedback on the first one. People seem like they really liked it, really enjoyed it. Um, you know, talk about the outwork mentality. Um, got a few people saying, you know, well, we want more nutrition stuff, we want more training stuff, and and that's great. Uh, I understand that, and we'll definitely be getting to some of that. We'll be getting to some of the, you know, kind of what I'm doing right now, follow me around for a day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but I, I, I got to thinking um, about, you know, when I started doing this, what am I going to talk about? <laughs> for those that know me know that I'm a very talkative person. Um, and so I've always seemed like I had something to talk about. But uh, what am I going to talk about? And, you know, I find where most people trip up training or nutrition-wise, you know, not even, not even that, you know, in general with bodybuilding or even life. Um, it's not the details, it's not the, the little bitty stuff, it's not, oh, should I eat six ounces of chicken breast or five ounces of salmon or, you know, this or that. It's attitude, it's philosophy, it's passion. And that's actually what I want to talk about today is passion, um, about why it's so important, about why it's absolutely critical to have passion. Um... We had a natural bodybuilding and figure VIP camp uh, a couple weeks ago. Some of you guys may have known about this. It was very small. We only opened it up to 16 people, and we flew in or had a, you know you know legends in natural bodybuilding like John Hansen, Dave Gooden, uh, Brian Whitaker. You know some of these guys fly in as well as you know top current competitors, and also you know brought in high level experts in nutrition and training. I'm talking about PhDs, even professors at universities. We had three professors, four professors from different universities. Um, and one of the days we were, uh, we were in Dr. Jacob Wilson's lab giving seminars. And he was nice enough, uh, my friend Dr. Jacob Wilson uh, is a professor at the University of Tampa, and he was nice enough to open up his lab to us and um, let us in there to give seminars to the, to the campers and let them check out his lab. And, Everybody really loved it, you know, it was such a cool experience. Um, and, you know, what was cool is all these guys are not only educated, but also love bodybuilding. If you ask Jacob, he'll say, I, I research bodybuilding for a living. <laughs> you know, and he's a professor. Um, but anyway, the, the, the thing I started to notice over the course of the weekend was there was a very common theme between all these really successful people, you know, all these professors, these top pros, these, these guys. One, they're all very cerebral. Even if they weren't experts or professors, they were very much thinking man's bodybuilders. Two, and then the experts all loved bodybuilding or powerlifting, all competed almost. Um, and then three, they all had passion. And actually at the... the, the the Q&A for the, we had a round table Q&A on Saturday. And, you know, we had a lot of people asking us not really nutrition and training questions. We had some of that. We had a lot of very general, you know, how do I become successful or how do I, you know, how do I pursue this passion I've got? How do I make it into something tangible? Um, and they got some unbelievable advice from guys like uh, Dr. Wilson, Dr. Uh, Dominic Diagostino, who's a professor here at USF. Uh, Dr. Mike Zordos, who's a professor at FAU. Um, Jeremy Linicky, who's a PhD candidate. Um, they got some amazing advice. But and Dr. Brian Whitaker from Oklahoma, uh, who's also a three-time lightweight world champ. They got some amazing advice, but what it basically boiled down to is you got to have passion. Okay, you can, you can have the, the best... You know, there are people who spend a lifetime searching for the optimal training nutrition protocol. That's what I do. Uh, but I also know that at the end of the day, it's really about getting in and putting the work in. You know, it's about, I see people who have, so many people who have paralysis by analysis. They'll sit there and they say, oh, they'll, 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 they'll sit there and they'll, what about, I got to tweak this rep scheme. I got to do this. I got to do that. I gotta, what about this chicken? What if I don't have 30 ounces, 30 grams of dextrose within 12 minutes after my workout? And, and you know, it's the stress you spend doing that stuff is actually worth less than, is actually worse than, than not getting everything exactly right. 
I always say the, the worst exec, the worst laid plan executed today is better than the best laid plan executed too late. And, uh, and let me give you an example of that. When I was in graduate school, about two years in, uh, I didn't really have any data. Uh, I had failed over and over and over and had so many setbacks because stuff just wasn't working. Um, I couldn't get these assays to run. I couldn't, the, the analysis for muscle protein synthesis wasn't working. We couldn't figure it out. I had two years of work and zero data. And I got very disheartened and started getting paralysis by analysis. I, 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 I would say it was lazy, but it wasn't lazy. I was still doing work, but I wasn't actually in the lab. I was sitting here, I'm like, okay, what can we tweak with this analysis to try and do this and, and this and that? And uh, Dr. Lehman, my advisor, called me into his office one day and he said, you know, you're really getting behind on this and, um, you know, you're at one of the premier research facilities in the world to do protein metabolism research. And quite frankly, you're not performing up to standard. And uh, you just need to get in the lab and do it. And you're just not putting in the time. And I said, well, I'm, I'm researching all this stuff. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. And he said, no, you have to come in and do it. Um, and he said, you know, that's what a PhD is. It's over and over and over and over again failing and then finally succeeding. And um, he said, you know, if, if, if a PhD is not for you, we can talk about a master's and, and, uh, and go from there. And I looked at him and I said, I, it was exactly what I needed to hear. I looked at him and I said, you are right and I'm going to fix it. And uh, ever since that day, I, I was in lab every single day, busted my hump, making sure I, I didn't care if I failed every single day. But it was about... It wasn't about getting the perfect protocol. It was about doing so much volume of work that eventually I'm going to figure out the right thing to do. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, but it was the only thing in my life I've ever wanted to quit. Those words came out of my mouth. I told my wife, I said, I want to quit. I can't take it anymore. I can't take failure anymore. And I think a lot of people get to that point in life or in bodybuilding and they lose their passion. You know, they, they get stuck in a job they don't like or they get stuck in a... Um, you know, they look at everything they've got to do to change their life, whatever they want to do, whatever their goal is, whether it's a bodybuilding show or starting a new business or getting out of debt or, you know, anything. And they say, man, I, I can't imagine the, the, the volume of work that it's going to take to do that from now till the time I have to accomplish it. Uh, they, it overwhelms them and they just freeze and they don't ever do anything. But you're no better off that way. You're no better off that way. You got to have passion. You got to want to get up and be fired about what, up about what you want to do. Let me tell you what, uh, sitting around all those experts and pros, I became pretty convinced that the main thread between all of them was they had passion. They loved what they do. Uh, Dr. Mike Zordos talked about it very much, and so did Dr. Wilson. He said, we're not the smartest guys out here, but we love what we do, and we just want it more than everybody else. And that's 100% true. I mean, successful people, yeah, they might have more talent on certain things. They might have, you know, you know, this or that, be stronger, whatever. But it's the passion that makes it follow through. You know, um, it, it's so important. It's so critically important. I mean, I, I see actually Jake's students, Dr. Wilson at University of Tampa, there, there was no graduate program when he got there for exercise physiology. He's making a graduate program. But it's not going to start till 2013. He has so many students that have already graduated that are actually going to stay there an extra year just so they can be with him for the graduate program. And when I go to that lab, I am always amazed because his undergraduate students act like graduate students. They act like PhDs. They're, they're, very, they're very intelligent about what they say, but it's more about their passion what they're fired up to do, they want to find answers, and they're willing to do what it takes, the work. Well, I went in there on a Sunday, his lab's full of people, you know, wanting to do work. Uh -huh. So, and that's totally a reflection of Jake's passion for what he does. He loves what he does, and it's infectious. And I think you'll find that with a lot of successful people that, you know, they don't want other people to fail. I remember what Joe Rogan said, Joe Rogan said one time, he said, you think Michael Jordan's a hater? 
You think people like that are haters? You think they want somebody else to fail? Hell no! They don't care. I, I, actually, most of uh, I was just talking about this with uh, Dr. Mike Zordos. He, we want other people to succeed. I want everybody watching this to get fired up and go out and do what you really want to do. But anything worth doing is going to be hard. It's going to take a long time. And again, I think the most important thing is just being willing to go out every single day and put the work in. Even if you, what you think you might be doing might be a little suboptimal or, you know, always be looking for a better way to do things, no question. But if you're using that as an excuse, if you're using your lack of, of knowing exactly what the right protocol or how many ounces of chicken to eat or, or uh, I can't go back to school because, you know, I don't know where to go um, and I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm not, quiet, quiet, do it. Find a way, find what you're passionate about, and find a way. Um, if you're going to do anything amazing in this life, it's not going to be a path that's laid out for you. Um, if you want to go be, you know, a cookie cutter job that's out there, there is a path laid out before you because a bunch of people have done it before you. If you want to go do something amazing, if you want to go do something different, you're going to have to make your own path. That's what it takes. And it's going to take hard work every single day. It's going to take gut-wrenching work. It's going to take the kind of work that makes you want to quit, that almost breaks you. Um, but it's going to make you a better person. Um, and I mean, I'm talking about, obviously this, you know, a lot of people are interested in weightlifting and bodybuilding, but I'm talking about life in general. Um, these people that I was around, you know, the, these, these experts, these world champions, they all had this. They all had this infectious passion for what they do. You could see Dave Gooden, who's been training for over 30 years, probably 35 years. He's in the gym and he's pumped up about his workout. He's ready to go. He's excited to work with these campers. Dr. Jake Wilson, he's, he runs a lab. He gives speeches every single day for teaching classes or he travels and gives seminars, he gives speeches every single day. He got there to give a speech to the, the, the campers and he was fired up about it. You gotta find what you love. You gotta find what you're fired up about. Find a way to be passionate about something. If you just go through life floating through, this isn't a dress rehearsal. You know, you... I think about so many times where my life could have gone differently if I hadn't taken chances or I hadn't been willing to try something, if I hadn't been willing to pursue something. My wife, for example, I met her after I'd, I was at, at uh, Eckerd College in St. Petersburg. And I met her after I'd already been accepted to University of Illinois and knew I was leaving. I knew I was leaving and she still had a semester left, or a year left. We pursued our relationship anyway because I knew she was different. Because I was passionate about her. She was passionate about me. I knew I wasn't going to find something like that somewhere else. And so I took that risk and it made an enormous difference in my life. Just like starting my own business and taking that risk. It made an enormous difference in my life. I want you to be able to have the same passion. Find what you love, whatever it is. I don't care if it's bodybuilding, powerlifting, figure, dominoes, whatever it is. Find what you're passionate about. Find a reason to get up every single day and be fired up about that day and put the work in every single day and you'll be amazed what you can do when you do it day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. That's how you do something amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, the second video log. Um, I know it was more of a rant than anything, but um, something I feel very strongly about. So. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.